there's so much that goes in to becoming a successful person and truly living life by design rather than by default. You're hungry. You want more for your life. You just want to know how. And that literally is what I do. At 23 years old, she was flat broke, but by 26, Emily made her first million dollars. I was working as a nanny, as a massage therapist. I'm sleeping on a mattress on the floor. Now, I obviously do this full time, impacted thousands and thousands of lives. It gets better. It gets better. Is it even possible? Hello everyone, it's Emily here, and I am here for a very special edition of the It's Emily Show. Today, talking all about safety, talking a little bit about the crime that's been happening in the United States and actually worldwide, but really bringing awareness for you and for your family. And I really prayed about this interview before doing it because it's sensitive to me being a victim of having uh, multiple instances in my life where I've been in danger, uh, but also, you know, I wanted to share and bring to you someone who's my dear friend who has been through this recently to help bring awareness and, and really just protect all of us in what could happen to you. Maybe it's never happened to you, uh, but Joanne, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. It's an yes. important issue. It's a very important issue. And we are here in Malibu, California at Joanne's beautiful home. And, you know, I, I believe we should just tell everybody like it yes. is the honest truth of why we feel called to do this interview today. What has happened in, you know, was it a month ago, two months ago? Believe it or not, no, three months three ago. Three months ago, okay. And when she says beautiful home, it once was a beautiful home for me. And I hope I feel that way about my home soon too. Uh, do you want me to get into it? What happened? Yeah. So I was a victim of an armed robbery in my home, uh, completely shocked, unexpected. And it was probably the most frightening thing I've ever had to endure. And the way it took place was this. I think the way it took place is very important to share. I literally had a family in town that week and we were very predictable our behavior my husband and i meaning the family would come over at six we'd leave our house at seven come home around 9 9 30. that one particular night it was a wednesday where we had taken on that routine leave at seven come back at 9 9 30. we pulled up in front of my house and my husband was supposed to come inside with me we had his cousins with us staying in another town called Santa Monica. And my husband said, you know what? I really feel like I need to drive them home tonight. I'm able to do so. Why don't you come for the ride? And I said to him, you know what? No, I feel bad I left my dog inside. I need to be there for her. So he took off and I was kind of excited. It was my first time being alone in a long time. I walked in. Do you, did you want to say something? No, no, I, I, I get it. I think some, a lot of us after a long day, we just want yeah, to go yeah, to... That, it's like that feeling. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm just going to hop in bed. So yeah. I closed my front door. I did lock it. I went inside my closet. I'm talking seconds later. I hear a noise and I'm in my closet. It's the one part of my house where there's no windows. There's windows everywhere. I said, that's strange. It's probably my husband coming in, even though he doesn't come through the back. But And I called his name. I went into our bathroom, which was the closest thing to my closet. Um, and, uh, when I did that, I realized, okay, it might've just been some, some wind. And I ran into our kitchen because I started hearing another noise. It sounded like somebody was, or something was shaking. And I was like, that's so weird. What's happening? Did something, yeah. so I was very confused. And then I wound up ending back in my bedroom, but facing the kitchen that I knew I was like, I can't go to bed because it might be an earthquake. And I looked at my dog who was not barking. You know, when you have a dog, they're usually a signal for something, right. but her hair was standing, small dog. And I thought the last time her hair stood, it was an earthquake. That's what's happening. So I stood right in between my doorway and I was like, think you're from New York. What, what were the, everything you needed to do during an earthquake? I started panicking and then I heard glass shatter right behind me. And it took a second, but I, I, I live in Los Angeles where crimes are happening every day. And my brain did not overthink it. I said, oh my God. This is a this is criminals coming into your home and you gotta run. And I literally ran straight out that door, barefoot, half 
nude in pajamas or whatnot. And I stopped because I needed my little dog. I called her name, she jumped in. And when I went outside, I saw three cars, one right in front of my house, two others with their lights on. I could see men flashing their lights. And I was like, shit, I don't know what to do. And I just kept running and I stopped. And I was like, you need to make a quick decision because oh I don't God. know what's going to happen. I ran into my across the street neighbor's home. She told me when I first moved to the neighborhood, her doors were always unlocked. By the grace of God, they were unlocked. And once I got in there, I screamed bloody murder. And I started screaming. I don't think I screamed when the robbers came in. And um, the other side of this story was uh, they wound up running out of my house when they heard my door slam. I don't think they thought it was me. It seemed as though the cops felt that they thought cops were coming in. They ran right into my neighbor next door who was walking his dog and they put a gun to his head and he was having a baby girl the very next day. And he just said, I didn't see anything. And thank God they didn't shoot it. They got in their car and on camera, we had all three cars drive away. Once the sheriff and the police and everybody came, they had asked my whole neighborhood to look at their cameras leading up to the event. And we discovered that they were casing our neighborhood, my block specifically. And then a little, little later on, we discovered it became my house for about five days up until the event, same time every day. I was being watched. So they knew exactly who they were targeting. And it was absolutely terrifying to have to experience that. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I'm i like shook just hearing this and I've heard the story before, but it's every time I feel like it's like, oh my God, is this, it's weird when it happens to someone you know so well. Yeah. Um, what, so when you, hold on. When you go into the neighbor's house, Obviously, your husband's not with you. You didn't have your cell phone, did you? I had, not, I had my dog. I had the most, you realize, like, it was funny because when I went in the house, I started thinking about all the things that they were going to steal. And I was like, no, no, no. You have the most important possession, my dog, who was like shaking in my arms. Yeah. But here's something for you all to learn. I didn't take my phone. It wasn't a priority. I had to get out the door. And now I, I don't know they ran out. I think they're still in my house. My neighbor never saw me running out. So he called my husband, the neighbor who had the gun to his head. He calls my husband and says, armed robbers were just in your house. And I don't know if there's some still in there, but I had a gun to my head. I just want to let you know. So my husband is now freaking out, calling me because he knew I was in the house and I had no cell phone. And he wanted to get in touch with me to see if I was okay. Uh, and what happened was he didn't get in touch with me. And I didn't know that there was no robbers in the house. Yeah. So when I was in my neighbor's home, I was like, I need to think of a phone number. I couldn't remember anyone's phone number because right. I, I have everybody's names yeah. saved. Awful. I couldn't yeah. remember my husband's phone number. Right. All of a sudden, my little brother's number pops in my head. Thank God. From New York City. Thank God he answered. He was able to call my husband who stopped driving at 110 hours per hour because he started going through red lights to come home to me. And he said, Joanne is safe don't go in the house, you know? And he came home and, you know, he, he saw me like, I, I think the description my neighbors and my husband said was it looked like I was possessed by a spirit. That's how Patrick, oh I was God. shocked. I was getting ready to go to bed. So, you know, oh. you, your brain, it takes a minute to, to even comprehend all that. Right. Not a minute. Right. It takes a few days to even say like, you have to keep saying, wait, did that just happen? I needed to be walked in by the sheriff to, um, sorry, uh, by the sheriff to actually believe my door was broken, you know? And I think it's important to note that what was coming out of my mouth, you know, this is not just common for armed robbery, but any kind of times, I yeah. think, especially for women, yeah. when we're victims, I started blaming myself yeah. immediately because I thought that I left my dog and that my dog ran out after me. And every, all I kept doing was apologizing. I kept saying to my neighbor, I'm so sorry, you have to help me. I'm so sorry, I'm such a bad dog owner. I never grabbed my oh dog, my gosh. she ran after me. Um, because the whole neighborhood was alarmed, one of our neighbors across the street heard me. And he said, ma'am, we looked at the camera. You didn't leave your dog, you actually ran back for her. And I remember just like crying. I'm so oh. sorry, because my initial reaction was to like blame myself. Yeah. I don't know why I'm crying. No, right you but have was, every right to cry. It was just like, um, I was, I was, it was such a hard experience that I just felt so apologetic. Like even the day after I said to my neighbor, I'm so sorry I did that to you. 
I'm so sorry. Like that was the initial thing, just like blaming myself, going through the motions. Um, one of the things I didn't do that night was I didn't put on my alarm mm. because I just got in. Like right. I, I always put my alarm in, but it was literally put down my keys. Just, I wanted to get out of my clothes. Yeah. And I kept thinking, what about if I would have put on my alarm, you know? So it's all the what ifs. All the all what the... ifs. And, yeah. it, and it took me a lot of time to be like, wait, I actually, it was a female detective who said to me, she said to me, do you know how amazing what you did was? I said, well, what do you mean? She said, most women freeze. I was going to say. She said, you I, ran. You ran. And I, she said to me, what made you run? And I ran out on a lot of things in my life I shouldn't have. Like I ran out yeah. of blood. I, I'm a runner. I actually tried to go to therapy to yeah. cure myself. From I run running. too. We're yeah, I'm runner. Hey, we... So I said to her, the very thing I tried to cure because I, I had a dog die suddenly in front of me and I couldn't be with it. Like I couldn't handle yeah. it. And I ran and I felt guilt my whole life yeah. about it. So she said to me, running potentially saved your life and saved your dog's life. And, and, and she said, so like, just tell people that if that, that's the thing we tell people, even if you're armed, by the way, they said, if you can run and get away, that's the first thing. Even like I, I've talked to even some um, defense, yeah. self-defense people. They said, the first thing we teach is if you can run mm -hmm. and get out of the situation, yeah. Do it. So I thought to myself, okay, the skill I have where I, I don't overthink it, yeah. I just run helped me. But oh my gosh. you know, part of me thinks like if I didn't realize it was crime and I would have overthought it for a second, yeah. that situation would have looked very, 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 different. very different. And and you know, it could have played out so many different ways. And we're so grateful that it didn't. I mean, we're just so grateful. But what is coming up for me since this has happened to you? It's like I had a friend a couple, uh, last week in Philly get assaulted in a parking lot. We have another mutual friend that was held at gunpoint. This is just like, and it's not just LA. This is happening. I mean, we can look up statistics if, you know, and I'll link them in the show notes, what's happening all across the United States, major cities, but even in uh, suburban areas in broad daylight. Some of you know, I, you know, had an incident at a gas station. I was just trying to pump my gas and someone harassed me and I had to run inside and call, they had to call the police. And these kind of things change you. They change you. Okay. And you also think before it happens, it's like, oh, that'll never happen to me. I honestly was that person. Yeah. yeah it'll never happen to me. Especially it's in like, Malibu. <laughs> you don't need X, Y, and Z insurance because you're always healthy. Whatever, right? So... We've learned so much. We've learned so much. You've learned so much. And what I'm so inspired by is how you've taken this complete horrendous situation that has disrupted your life, your home, your safety, your mental stability, and you have gone to work on creating change and awareness. Thank you. Which... I don't believe that this is randomly happening, that today you're listening to this call, you're watching us on YouTube, wherever you can find us. It, 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 you need to wake up. We all need to wake up. And we need to look around and we need to become more safe. And so what has been, let's talk home first, because clearly you guys have changed your home, the way you do things, the way you operate. Some people will just pack up and leave to another home, but if you don't change your habits, if you don't change the way you set up your home, I mean, it's just like wherever you go, you take yourself with you, you know? 100%. So what has been the things that you have done to yeah. protect your home? Uh, a lot. There's been a lot of things we've done to protect our home. The first thing, and you know, this was not my expertise, so you seek experts. The detective told me that I need to start looking at my home as if I was a robber. And I do that now everywhere. It's a sickness. I walk around my neighborhood and I'm like, if I'm a robber, I'm going in that home. I did it to my parents. This is how I could get in. You have to be very strategic because that's what the robbers are doing. When they're casing your homes, they're doing that to find out what time of day is this person not here? Are they always parking their car there? And have there not been any movement? Are there no lights on? Oh, they're not home at this time. So you want to start looking at your home, how you live, and your surroundings of your home as if you were ready to rob it, which is very eerie because then you find out a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, wow. So the first thing I recommend everyone do, but it's what I did, 
Because robbers want to come through the back of your house. They don't want to come through the front. Yeah. So they're looking for an entrance in the back. Can I climb that fence? Is there a camera and a light that's going to shine on me? And how flimsy is that lock? I had very oh. stylish locks. They looked good, my doorknobs. And you're going to have to start making some changes. I had very stylish lighting yeah. as well. We wound up getting deadbolts. Not just any deadbolts, um, but we have a specialized key that you can't even like key it. And it cost a bit of money, but my safety, there is no yeah. price anymore. We also had some cameras. Here's the thing. We didn't do any checks on our cameras in a while. When we found out our cameras were no longer working, when we had to give the sheriff our cameras. So I would recommend that you check your cameras. We don't just have one company anymore. We have three different camera types in our house. Just in case one starts acting up and we can't see it. Do you know what kind? Like our Yeah, I could supply some of the information yeah, for we'll, you, but we'll I put definitely have a ring notes. and I recommend the ring. The ring is something you should all get because no matter where you are, that ring light shows you movement. So I could be in Italy and my ring light's going off mm -hmm. and letting me know the mailman's there. You want to know who's who's coming to your house. Right. You know, you want to know there was an Amazon delivery and you were like, wait, I didn't even know I ordered that because a delivery box outside your home staying there for hours is clue. No one's home. These little things we don't think of. Oh my of. gosh. Yeah. So that's the first thing. If you have a lot of windows and glass doors the way I do, I live in California, it's very common. There's a, um, there's a film, there's a security film and I will give everything yeah. to Emily and you guys could just yeah. find it. Um, but it's a film that buys you time. So we had our entire windows and doors with this film on it. So now a robber can't just take their stick. They have these specialized sticks and it just shatters your glass. If you, got, if you guys watched Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. Dorit Kemsley, they show it. Her robbery was almost exact to mine, except they held her at gunpoint. When I saw her video, it looked like my video. And even they were dressed the same. And all they do is they take this, this little stick and they go like this and the whole glass shatters. Now, if they try to do it, it's going to take a minute. No, that doesn't so sound like... So there's a like, film yeah. you put over your windows. Doesn't sound like a lot of time, but if you have your it's alarm on and your ring light's going on, you're going to yeah. see somebody. Now you have time to make a move, whether you're armed, you get a chance to figure mm -hmm. out how you want to deal with that. If you're not armed, you could see, can I get out? Uh, yeah. Whatever it is, you get, a, you get a minute is a long time when you're in a tragic, tragic situation. I didn't have a minute. I had seconds and I was lucky. I wasn't sick. I was lucky I wasn't pregnant. I was lucky I was not old and I, had, I was able to move, run out. Not right. everyone's going to be in that situation. I was lucky I wasn't in bed. Another thing you have to do is get an alarm system. And they, an alarm system is something that we have, but we were lazy. We yeah. Always and I a, think most people can relate to that. Sometimes I still am. I have to yeah. remind myself. Or they only put it on when they leave town. Yeah. So get an alarm, but put it on every day. Put it on every day and get it hooked up to your phone so that like as you're walking out the door, you could put it on if that's like something that's going to make your life easier, you know, but having that alarm on and having it ring is a deterrent. If you can, I was told by the detective that a house that has a big dog with a loud bark is much less likely to get robbed than small dogs with tiny barks and just not, nothing at all. So having a dog, a big dog, a, a nice okay, German to, shepherd. We need to get dogs. It's, they, they see it. They don't want to deal with it. Why deal right. with some like vicious dog? Um, and also keep your TV on, keep lights on. Don't park your car the same way every time. Wow. Sometimes park it in the driveway. Sometimes park it outside. I tell this to people who are on Instagram. Don't post in real time. If you're on vacation, post from your home as well, because we don't want to make it easy to be tracked. Same yeah. thing with your whereabouts. If you're traveling, have a neighbor. We were not good at this, by the way. We live in Malibu. We thought we lived in Mayberry. Have a neighbor who's willing. One of my neighbors is now like, you know what? Would we park our cars in front of your house in your driveway when you're gone? You know, just to make yeah. it look like there's action going on. Right. And the, one of the biggest things we've done, the biggest things we've done, we did not know our neighbors. We were very private people. Our neighbors wound up finding us after this incident. But now I'm in constant communication with my neighbor. I started a website. It's called, and you guys are more than welcome to check it out just to see it protectmalibu.org. I did this two days after my incident because I felt the need to educate people. My neighbors got to all subscribe to it because I went on next door and said, if you want to be subscribing to my, this. Yeah. so now as soon as we see suspicious cars, and here's the thing, we're in a society where we're taught, don't judge, right. you know, 
Yeah, I was like that. Right. If it's suspicious, I'd rather you guys be wrong than be right and not do anything. Mm -hmm. Suspicious means they're hanging out and you don't recognize the car. Linger. They're lingering. They're slowly driving. Sometimes they might be looking at houses to buy in your neighborhood. Okay, you're wrong. Gear up. But that's what it looks like. They don't just commit crime at first. They case your neighborhood. They case the homes that are easy. They usually have one person casing, and when they're going to rob you, they come in twos or threes mm -hmm. with backpacks. You want to look for these things. If you don't know the person, then that's the thing. And in our neighborhood, which is really scary, because it's mine, I was a victim of organized crime. It wasn't just like some random criminal. These are like organized crime gangs that are really good at what they do. Professionals. It's a business. It's a business. Yeah. They have women walking around in Lululemon in Malibu, California, walking a dog saying hi to you. Now, if you've never saw this woman before, say, hey, where do you live? You live in our neighborhood? Because I know my neighbors now. You see me when I walk. Yeah, we know everybody I now. know them. Yeah. yeah. Emily knows them now. So if you see someone you've never seen before, just kindly say, oh my goodness, do you live here? I've never seen you before. See what they say. Catch the patterns and then wow. just keep an eye on it. I would have never thought of that. Yeah. This. So at any point now, and it's a little bit of a job for me, a one I'm willing to take on because my neighbors look at me as the mayor now. <laughs> They'll be like suspicious. It's you know, a hot mayor. I even put a license plate reader outside my house. Yeah. Now I have a license plate reader that, because here's the thing about your ring cameras. Look at them at night. You can't see license plates. Right. You need to get a special license plate reader. I recommend your neighborhood chipping in. Mine wasn't willing to. We paid for it, but we have a license plate reader. So I've done everything I can to feel secure. I still don't feel secure, but these are steps. And you should have a system, a system, yeah. a list, because this is very overwhelming, everything I'm saying today. Like, it's like, oh it my is. God, like this, it I, I, it's hard enough to get out the door and make right. things on time. Right. So to simplify it, you have a list. Windows are shut. TV is on. Left a light on. I made sure that my ring lights and everything were working. Everything was in place. All the packages and mail were brought in. Okay, great. Mail is to, stopped if you're traveling. Always stop your mail. Now I'm going to lock my door, double check I locked it, put the alarm on, and and leave. And make sure I told a few neighbors to stop by and yeah. you know, water something if it needs to be watered. Or right. they, they drop a newspaper, pick it up. Do not wow. make yourself a target. Wow. Wow and wow. Oh my gosh. I, it's motivating. This should motivate you to make some changes. And I love that you said, make a list. And in fact, we'll make a list and put it in the show notes and you can print this off and, and have a family meeting about it. This is what I really recommend. I was talking to a friend, they have three kids and it was the kind of home, like most homes, where the door's always open, everyone's going to and from. One of the kids is 16 now, so he's driving. Like if, you, if your life looks like that, what I would recommend, and I'm sure you can chime in, is for someone to have a family meeting and to talk about these things. Because, you know, ever, all of our lives look different depending on are we single, are we married, do we live in a big house? Do we live in a small house? Do we live with windows? Do we live with kids? Do we live with roommates? 100% one of our good friends had a meeting with her children to talk about what happens. What happens if somebody comes in our home? How are we going to deal with it? What happens if I'm held at gunpoint mm -hmm. and this friend happened to be armed and she's like, and I pull out my gun, but if you're in the room behind me, you know, and I don't want to bring up the gun issue because it's a contradictory yeah. issue for a lot of people. Right. But, you know, in this day and age, a lot of people feel when we, you know, this is an issue in Los Angeles. I don't know what city you live in, but our cops now can't respond as quickly. Our friend in Beverly Hills recently couldn't have a cop respond because she didn't know if the guy in her house was armed. And that made it not an emergency because there were so many other emergencies they had to respond to. So now we're no longer able to just depend on law enforcement and our government. We're not. Yeah. And we have to get really, really smart and say, okay, we have to know how to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. For some people, a gun is not comfortable. Then you have to know what you're going to do. And right. I'll tell you what you're going to do. If they come in your house with a gun, and I was told this by a gate security, one of the best security, you comply. You don't fight them. So you'd have to be willing to comply. Right. You either decide I'm going to defend myself. And if I defend myself, I have to be willing to act or I comply. If you're in a situation like me, where you get to run, that's the number one thing you do. You get you run and you get out. Your material things are not right. that important. Right. But if you're in a situation where you're elderly, some woman at our neighborhood meeting, I throw neighborhood meetings now to talk about these issues, and she raised her hand. She said to the officer, I'm not comfortable 
having armed security, nor am I comfortable having a gun. A lot of people are uncomfortable with this stuff. She said to him, so what do I do? He goes, well, you have two men with guns in your house. There's nothing you can do other than comply. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So like, but knowing how you're going to comply, and I'll tell you what I was told. You should always have a little cash on hand and know exactly where it is and have a box of jewelry. I would recommend it not be your best jewelry. Costume jewelry would suffice, but put it in nice boxes. They're coming to get things. Give them what they want and get out. And I know mm -hmm. this sounds eerie, but you need yeah. to know what to do. I don't carry cash with me. If they came in and they wanted cash, I'd be like, uh, Same. Uh, and they're going to get aggressive. <laughs> I'd be like, can I demo yeah. you? So have no, a little, the, the detective told me this, have cash on you. Yeah. Know exactly where it is and say, here, here, and here's my jewelry. And hopefully that's enough and they're going to want to get out after that. Yeah. Unless they followed you home, which is another thing you have to be aware of. A lot of these criminals know where you live because you just walked into Louis Vuitton or you were out with your girlfriend and you had a great watch, one that they know is worth a lot of money. They follow you home in a Mercedes Benz. They're not these criminals. The ones that um, came here were in a huge SUV. I thought it was an Uber, black one, gorgeous like Escalade. They're not coming in like broken down vehicles. Like they know what they're doing. So now I'm so aware that when I'm driving, I watch who's behind me. I thought I had a car following me the other day. I pulled over and then the car passed and I was wrong. But I'm, I'm super. I got to tell you that I had a car follow me home before. Because it, by the grace of God, I was aware and I spoke at an event. Thank God you were aware. And I noticed someone was following me and I took a right and he took a right. I went into my alley, he went into my alley. And it's all awareness. So I really, what I'm getting to is like, get off your phones, look around. Pay attention. Pay attention. If I didn't pay attention, I would have went into my garage and once you go in, this is a very old place I lived, you're stuck. The, the gate closes and he would have went in there with me. I don't even know. We probably wouldn't be here right now. Who knows? But what I'm telling you is awareness is key. And which I think we can transition to, okay, now we're out and about doing life. We're with girlfriends. God forbid one of my friends was at work and went into the parking lot and got assaulted in broad daylight just last week. You know, what are some things we can do to protect ourselves pumping gas? Yeah. Oh God. Pumping gas. So I don't go to the gas station alone anymore. And I know yeah. that's not practical for everyone. It's too, I'm still dealing with some trauma yeah. and it's too scary. And I live in LA and there's not always the best people hanging around at the gas station but there was one day I did have to go. And I will tell you this, designer bags are no longer something I bring with me. No. That's making me a target. I don't wear jewelry. I literally go in my car, whatever wallet I brought comes right out with me. I do not have my cell phone. I'm constantly looking, put my card in, go back in, lock the door. And I'm watching, I'm not texting. I'm watching my environment. Now, this comes to a question that's very close to my heart, not a question, more like a topic. I've been told by many people who know that I'm fighting this, that we live in Los Angeles, California. This is the way it is. We need to accept it now. And I thought to myself, I took a step back and I, I really received that. Going to a gas station and being scared to pump gas, going out with your girlfriends and not being able to wear that designer bag because you're petrified, that makes you a target. This is now a third world country mentality. Right. We live in the United States of America. So what I encourage all of us is no, 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 we're not going to accept it. There's more of us than them. We fight. We first get smart. We first become vigilant, mm -hmm. but we start looking at where the problem's coming from. Right. And in our, in Los Angeles, we have a district attorney who's not on the side of victims. He's on the side of criminals. Criminals are in prison. Clapping. His name is George Gascon, and I recommend you read his policies. One of the criminals came out and said, I want to tattoo George Gascon's name, the first thing I do to get out of jail, because I murdered someone. I was supposed to spend 30 years in prison, and I'm getting out like in a few years. So when the criminal knows that they can come into my house, this was what I was told, as long as they didn't shoot me, they get out the next day. They get out the next the day? The next day. So if I said to Emily, Emily, I have some phenomenal chocolate cake. You can eat it and you don't get fat ever. 
She's going to eat chocolate cake every single of day. Of course. This is the climate we're living in. Criminals have no have very little consequence. So what does everyone need to look for? You know, because obviously we have people watching this from so many different areas, different yeah. states. What do they need to look for? They need for? to look for who's making these decisions. I had no idea about George Gesco no. because I was living in my own world. Yeah. I was more Why? worried about like the macro level, the country. Yeah. And I had no idea. It, A lot of my friends didn't either. No, we didn't. And it, and it, it's, it starts micro. It's first it starts in the home. This starts in the neighborhood. I mean, how many people watching this right now actually know your neighbors? Do you have meetings? Do you... I mean, this is kind of a lost art, but with great leadership, which Joanne has obviously taken that, you can create that environment for sure. I want to quickly go back to when we're out and about. Um, do you recommend anything like mace, pepper spray, bear? Someone told me bear spray because it sprays farther. I was told wasp spray. Wasp? But that could fly to, I don't want to recommend anything yeah, yeah, yeah. to people. All right. So... Truthfully, I, I have not been carrying a weapon or anything. I've just been running in and out. But I, if I could, I, or I probably will, once I go back out yeah. into the world, like the way I yeah. used to, I think a taser, why not? Especially yeah. if you're in New York City. I know a lot yeah. of my New York City friends who are on the streets all the time and are walking and are going on the subway, which has become a very dangerous place. Yeah. The subway is extremely dangerous. Um, but yeah, a weapon. But I think before you even have to bring that... There are ways you don't have to put yourself in a situation for that. Mm -hmm. For instance, like I won't go hiking without you. No. It's harder to it's harder to attack two people. It's usually the targets are women, solo women. Always have a buddy. Always have a buddy. I think. And uh don't go to the neighborhoods that, you know, a lot of yeah. crime. I mean Or even um alleys, uh, oh. parking garages. I don't, I don't bring my car out anymore. No. I take an Uber where I can get dropped in front. Parking is the worst. Always check your back seat Yeah. before you go in the car. Here's another thing. Uh, I said to you guys a lot of things today. If your car is operated, what do they call that? The battery operator yeah. where, where you don't turn it. Yeah. Don't keep it in the front of your house. That's where I always kept mine because now they have machines or technology where if your battery is in the front of your house, they can get in your car. One of my friends had that situation and there was a man in her car. Literally so in you her want car. To check. Oh yeah. This is another thing that happened. We could tell you so many stories. So you I mean, want to check. So I now yeah. made a habit uh, to look through my back seat first. I think she even saw me the other day, put a light through somebody yeah. else because I, I believe that if they want to steal from you, no matter how protected you are, they're going to, they're going to find a way. So we just have to like be a step mm, ahead of them. We do. And be prepared to run Absolutely. and not go in a car and not put ourselves in a situation. <sighs> okay. This is, these are a lot of good tips and I, I hope they're good yeah, tips. They're, no, they're, this is like awareness. Uh, what I, I, what I, I feel so much for you. I'm proud of you. You've been through a trauma, a traumatizing experience how are you coping? How are you getting better? You know, and there's people watching this, maybe they have similar situations, or maybe it's a divorce. Maybe they lost a partner. Maybe there's been a death. It's traumatic. It is traumatic. And I'm, I'm still going through it. You so, are. So uh, I'm going to say in the beginning, I was crippled, paralyzed, couldn't move. And it was a new world for me in the sense that there was a lot of people that wanted to help me. And I said, Yes. One of my good friends said to me, you guys can't sleep here. And she knew I had family visiting. She opened up her entire house for me and it was so uncomfortable for me, but I was in such a position where I needed people to pick me up. So mm -hmm. I would say the first tip is if there are people who want to help you, my go-to is to resist that. In this situation, I think I got stronger quicker because I didn't resist it. I allowed help. I allowed people to say to me, you got us, lean on us. I'd go to their houses. I'd cry. I'd shake. I felt it. I felt it so much. It put me in very scary places. I did not resist the feeling of this. It was because it was my bedroom. <laughs> uh, the second thing, you have to do what works for you without judgment. I can't be in my house alone right now. And I feel yeah. almost ridiculous saying that. No. But I can't. Yeah. Especially my husband travels a lot. So I will travel either to my parents' home to be with them, or I stayed in a hotel when I had to work on Change something here. Change environment. 
Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, I'm going to work towards that. And maybe it takes me a year to get there, but unless someone knows what that's like to go to bed, mm -hmm. like bedtime is very scary for me now. And I don't want it to be, but I have to accept yeah. it is scary for me now. So having people, you're staying with yeah. me right now, loving yeah. having you in my house. So being kind to yourself and saying, yeah, this is hard. And knowing that it's been three months yeah. and I'm better today than I was three months you ago. You are. I'm wiser. I am a little angry at times. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I've been. Well, you're going through like the stages of grief. Yeah. Like I yeah. ran after a car the other day. I don't know if that was safe. I thought I was being cased and I like was like, I'm running after them. And I came back home like panicked. And there was this part of me that I was like, no one's ever going to do this to me or my friends again. And then I was like, whoa, whoa, take mm -hmm. this anger and put it towards something. And I was like, okay, do an Instagram post on educating people on being smart and pointing out license plates. Yeah. And what I then did was called the sheriff and said, I'd like to report something. Yeah. They're like, you ran after the car and I realized I'm human and I'm a little nuts. Yeah. It, trauma leaves you frazzled. It and does. It, make, it puts you in points where you don't recognize yourself. You don't. But it's normal. It would have been abnormal for me to like be okay after this. Yeah. And recognize... like. When I say to myself, wait, no, that's absolutely normal. Right. Anyone who goes through any kind of life shattering, unexpected thing, yeah. of course you're going to feel like this. Thank God yeah. I feel like this. My body can feel. Yeah. And it's going to get through it. Yeah. Breathe through it. Cry through it. And I'm going to help it. other people Have... prevent this from happening. And at least if it does happen, know some tricks, some tools. That That's yeah. what I want to do. I want Equip. the old lady down the block to feel like, oh my mm. God. There's somebody in my neighborhood who's fighting to make it safe, who's fighting yeah. to keep us together because a lot of people in this situation want to keep it private. And I get why. Yeah. You don't want to talk about this. Right. I think it's healing to talk about for it. For me, it's healing. But for I, some people, it's like they want their privacy. You know? I understand that as well. But there's something so healing about going through it. And you're using, you're taking a really crappy situation and you're making the most of it. It's, you know, like our, my friend, Tony Robbins always says, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And I know it seems weird, but there's a deeper message behind all of it and yeah. you're using it and it's, it's, it's creating a new conditioning inside of you and it's creating more resilience inside of you, which I commend you for that. Thank you. And we so get, and we get to choose how we write this story. Yeah. So my new thing is I didn't. I didn't run away from it. I ran away from it. Like I, yeah. I was that strong, excuse me. <clears throat> and I was able to do that. And that helps me to just like say, okay, you know, remember that strength you had to just know yeah. to run, yeah. to get yourself out of that situation. Yeah. Because I think we can rewrite it as many ways we yeah. want, but find the positive in it. Cause yeah. Absolutely. You'll, get, you'll get traumatized from this if you don't. Oh, well, thank you for sharing and send this to your mom, your sister, your husband, your boyfriend, your brother, your whole neighborhood. Like I would literally send this to everyone and say, what are we going to do? Because it's not just happening here in LA where we are today. It's happening everywhere and we need to become more aware. So and we can even protect if you ourselves. Could, your city's not safe. If you yourself can be um, a leader in your little neighborhood, and you are the neighborhood that stops crime and yeah. comes together as yeah. a community, you'll inspire other neighborhoods. And then all of a sudden we can get a bigger city. Absolutely. Well, it starts with one. It's the ripple effect. So thank you so thank much for, for showing up and thank sharing. You. Thank you. God bless everyone.